Shout out to the Secular Talk subreddit. I saw this video of Joe Rogan from their subreddit. Uh, Joe Rogan has continuously made a right-wing turn ever since he has moved to Texas, as he seems to be reversing almost every single one of his left-wing claims that he used to have back in 2018. So it's gotten to the point now where anytime you have to try to point out any left-wing things he's said or done, you pretty much have to go back to 2018 whether it's like debating Dave Rubin or Candace Owens or whatever. I do remember him debating like uh, Dan Crenshaw on Medicare for All or, you know, universal health care. Um, but even that was two years ago. So, you know, it's, it's definitely become a while since then. And Joe Rogan was actually one of the few people in the sphere, and this is a surprising opinion. And this is years ago, by the way. I want to say even as far back as like 2014, definitely 2016. But he actually argued for universal basic income. Universal basic income is a, as you know, it's in the name, but essentially it's a, a, a plan that would give a universal amount of money to everybody in the nation. So typically the number you're, you'll hear is $1,000, $1,200. And there's a lot of benefits fits to it that we're going to get into afterwards, you know, lowering costs for, you know, for example, like crime or, um, you know, different issues like that, uh, maybe long term health care issues that can ensue because people don't have, you know, money for health insurance, which would keep them more healthy in the long term. Um, you know, there's a lot of different stuff that UBI would be good for. It also wouldn't be like, you know, social pro wouldn't have the stigma of social programs since everybody would be getting it. But he says that he has changed his mind on this issue. Go ahead and check this video out. What's the uh, monthly payment stuff that they're going to come out with? Um, oh, universal basic universal income. basic income. I just think that was a good idea before the pandemic. During the pandemic, when everybody's getting the you know the money from the government, people didn't want to work, and it was like, and I was like, oh, this is not good. Yeah, this is not smart. Well, that's what they wanted. They wanted the universal basic. That's what they want is universal basic income, and then. Um, you got to give people some incentive to do things. Doing it here. Thousand dollars per month universal basic income pilot program on Austin City Council agenda. Yeah. Those dudes are just going to do a lot of coke. It's a small amount of people. Though, eighty-five though. families. <laughs> yeah. I'm not accusing those eighty-five families of being cokeheads. <laughs> but I think, um, I think for for families that are struggling, that's one thing. But for gotta, uh, for everybody, like they were going to give it to every person. Yeah, it's going to be like a free thing. Yeah, yeah. I think it has to come with like, like if I were to do a program, it would be more like a job program. Like I'll pay you while you get these marketable skills, while you train in these marketable skills, but I'm not going to pay you to just like do nothing, do nothing. Yeah, yeah. there's um a certain amount of entitlement that people have today that they just did not have before where they feel like the, the, the government owes them something regardless of how little or how much they put into the system they feel yeah. like the government owes them something so when you say to those people hey what do you think about universal big basic income everybody gets twelve hundred dollars a month they're like yeah we need yeah we deserve it we should you should fucking give us the money man you know and they start thinking goofy and then you get um inflation right <laughs> right? That's not good. Yeah, and that's what we're hit now. With, and right? outpacing uh, increases in salaries too. Right. Cost of living, and then cost you have of living. supply shortages, so things are more expensive. Yeah. Harder to get. Yeah. I mean, if everybody's get twelve hundred dollars, <sighs> what's going to happen to your rent? I don't think it's a good idea to give everybody twelve hundred dollars. I think some people need a fire lit under their ass. And if you want to make more exceptional people in this country, I don't think the way to do that is to give everybody $1,200. No. So, yeah, man. I mean, pretty much everything Joe Rogan just said in that video was just completely wrong, um, per usual. I don't think he actually did any research into the issue of whether or not unemployment benefits, uh, you know, created the labor shortage. Obviously, what ended up happening during the coronavirus pandemic was a labor shortage. Uh, workers, this is this is the very basics, you know, it's like e economics 101. Uh, you know, I just learned this in macroeconomics. Uh, the way that employees determine whether or not to enter the labor force is dependent upon the, you know, cost benefit analysis of whether or not it's worth it. So workers, essentially what they did was they were already working shit jobs, but they looked at it during a coronavirus pandemic where the uh, conditions were absolutely horrible. Safety precautions were terrible, especially Joe Rogan here. He doesn't even believe in coronavirus, so he wouldn't be in favor of any like safety precautions or protections for workers in that realm either. Uh, they also had children at home to take care of with no help whatsoever. Um, and so they said, hmm. 
is this worth it for me to get a job with the horrible wages and uh, the coronavirus situation, the health threat, lack of safety precautions, no one to take care of my children at home now that schools are shut down. You know, what exactly uh, can we do? I'm sure Joe Rogan would have said, you know, send these kids to school. So there is no uh, actual evidence that uh, there's seriously, there's no evidence that ending unemployment, that unemployment benefits had pushed it. Also, the labor shortage had really lasted much longer than the unemployment benefits even did. But this was a study. It says ending unemployment benefits had little impact on jobs and fueled $2 billion spending cut study finds. So obviously spending is an extremely important aspect of the economy, which we're going to get into. But this was um, a paper. Um, it says that bet has seemed to limit a payoff, have, have had a limited payoff so far. It's talking about 26 state governors, all Republican except one, opting out of pandemic era pandemic programs several weeks before their official expiration date on Labor Day. Um, and so according to a paper authored by economists and researchers at Columbia University, Harvard University, the University of Massachusetts Amherst, and the University of Toronto, the research was published Friday. The data suggests unemployment benefits aren't playing a big role in hiring challenges and that other factors are having a larger impact, a similar thrust to other research analyzing the policy decisions. And so this specific one says that there was like a tiny uptick in, uh, in employment. It was like one out of eight, I think, people got a job who were unemployed, one out of eight of those who were unemployed. And then what ended up happening was when you cut those benefits to those people who are not going to be able to get a job because they either have to take care of people at home, uh, children at home, or there's not really good options for them. Um, you're going to end up leading to a, a big hole in the economy because the economy is really dependent upon consumer spending that spurs the entire economy. Um, and so you just like just completely fucked your own economy uh, with the $2 billion spending cut and barely anybody actually got employed. Um, you know, extra unemployment benefits are not primarily to blame for labor shortages. You know, uh, this one even says most prefers jobs over benefits. Many economists say boosted benefits don't generally stop people who are unemployed from seeking jobs. Homebase, which provides employee scheduling software, says employment actually grew 1.7% more slowly last month in states that are eliminating the $300 federal aid early. Um, Century Foundation says that in the four states that ended the $300 federal bonus on June 12th, claims for state benefits rose by 3.7% from June 12th to June 19th, while applications climbed just 1% during that period in the other 46 states in Washington, D.C. So there's just not really any evidence for this stuff. It says a paper published in May by the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco found that if 7 of 28 people receiving the $300 federal boost were offered a job in a given month, only one would refuse the position because of the extra assistance. When we're thinking about the typical individual who's unemployed during the pandemic, the supplemental income we found wasn't enough to deter accepting a job offer to return to work at their previous earnings, says Nicholas Petrosky, Nadu, uh, an economist at the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco and co-author of the analysis. So this is all hard data, obviously. Joe Rogan doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. I think most of Joe Rogan's stuff that he says just is something where, oh, Billy Bob James, my buddy Billy Bob James told me that he took a... Uh, he took the COVID vaccine. He woke up the next day with a lump on his balls. And, you know, now, ergo, you know, the, you know, the virus, uh, not the virus, the vaccine causes a lump on your nuts. Like, it's not, none of this is true. The real reasons for the labor shortage were simply the workers, a lot of them left the labor force, by the way. People are only unemployed if they're searching for work. Um, you're not counted as unemployed if you're not searching for work actively. You have to be looking for work actively. So a bunch of people straight up left the labor force because the wages were straight garbage. There was barely any protections. They had kids at home to take care of and, you know, all of this stuff. And so what they said was these negatives outweigh the positives, which is the garbage pay that the businesses are giving. And what we're even seeing now is there's actually a lot of evidence for actual um, business run inflation where it's like they're having record profits and but they're somehow uh raising the prices so it doesn't appear you know that um there's you know there's a there appears that there's a lot of this kind of stuff going on a lot of this you know corporate greed and none of this stuff that people are saying in this colloquially is not actually ended up being ending up being true also want to explain to you what an automatic stabilizer is um, in economics, you know, fiscal uh, fiscal policy is the policy of spending by Congress, right? Whereas monetary policy is the Federal Reserve's policies of how much money is in circulation, interest rates. 
so an automatic stabilizer is actually a way to um, be able to stabilize the economy uh, without actually passing anything. Unemployment insurance, taxation, these are things that are automatic stabilizers because in an economy where it's doing really well, let's say, let's say an economy is doing really well, you want to contract the aggregate demand in the economy. The higher that you have, uh, you know, if you have tax rates set in a progressive sense, if people are doing better off, they're paying more money in taxes and the government is making more money. And so people are going to spend less because they're being taxed more. Um, at a higher rate. Unemployment insurance, for example, if the uh, economy is doing poorly and you need to stimulate the economy, more people will apply for unemployment insurance and they will get that money that will spur the economy by spending more money. In a uh, good economy, less people apply for unemployment insurance, which means that um, you're going to have, you know, obviously less people who are relying on government spending government spending goes down and so those are these are things that automatic stabilizers in a recession you want to increase government spending in a good economy you want to decrease government spending um, and so we can see here why exactly is it that we actually even did the unemployment benefits in the first place it's because what ends up happening during the coronavirus pandemic is businesses shut down um, and people are spending less money consumption uh, completely destroyed goes down really badly and you also want to protect workers and keep them at home as well to protect them from you know what's going on with the virus but what ends up happening is your aggregate demand curve this is a uh, aggregate demand is the demand of everything in the economy combined so you can see this equation that i have written here y equals c plus i plus g plus nx that's actually the gdp expenditure formula so uh for the gdp expenditure formula it's uh, consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net exports. That's how you calculate it. And so aggregate demand is all of it combined. On the y-axis, you have price level. On the x-axis, you have output. And so what happens is when non-price factors um, of demand alter, in this case, you have... Um, you have incomes going down because people are out of work. What ends up happening when incomes go down, uh, when incomes actually go down, what ends up happening is aggregate demand it actually shifts to the left. Shifting to the left means it's going down. So your AD curve is actually, uh, it's your AD curve is lowering. It's going down. This is really horrible for the economy. According to Keynes's theory, you know, this is like the, you know, demand-driven theory of uh, what happened during the Great Depression. But what ends up happening when aggregate demand goes down is people start saving more money. People start investing less. So businesses have less money to expand. Uh, businesses shut down, meaning there's less jobs available. And so it's consumption that keeps the economy going. And so when you, uh, when you put in unemployment insurance, when you expand... Uh, you know, UI, when you expand the unemployment insurance, what ends up happening is the aggregate demand curve, you know, will shift right. Now, it would shift back up just to here, right? But if you increase it, you know, AD goes up. Uh, AD will rise, although, you know, it'd probably just go back to the regular AD you can see there. So that's why you do it. It's because when aggregate demand starts to go down too low, business is shut down, the economy is literally contracting, the GDP is getting smaller, and you're having less business, less businesses, less business activity because more people are saving than investing. And so you have to spur the economy because your local business isn't going to be able to hire people if they're not making any money by purchasing stuff. So by giving unemployment insurance, you're able to protect workers from the pandemic and you're also able to spur the economy by keeping this up and keeping businesses going so that's the reason why you do it um and you know it it did uh you know it was the right thing to do and there is no evidence that the unemployment insurance actually um was something that you know kept the labor shortage going um now to talk more about you know his comments about universal basic income um, the universal basic income, the giving $1,000 out, like, it's not like you're just giving $1,000 out. All of this stuff, especially with, like, government spending, there's always costs that are being removed. So, for example, raising minimum wage, what that ends up doing is, even for businesses, raising minimum wage is good. Because what actually ends up happening is, businesses save money on training employees. And that's a huge cost. I mean, if you've ever gotten a job, you know, you have to train and you're getting paid just for training purposes. But if you have to keep training people for barely being at your job it's a huge waste of money and so you get long-term employees think of like costco right costco very like long-term employment for that kind of a job um and so what what you end up seeing is there are costs that are counteracted also higher minimum wage less people 
being able to qualify for welfare benefits, meaning, you know, you save money in government spending. So $1,000 would be contracted by how much money would be saved and being able to go visit the doctor. And instead of showing up to the emergency room with the heart attack or cancer, you were able to detect that cancer early or because of your doctor visits, you were able to keep your health in check and you didn't have to end up in the ER with that heart attack, right? That's how you, you, how you lower costs. Or crime would be lowered. We spend a lot of money on crime, right? About imp on imprisoning people. All of that would be saved money. So it's not like you're just giving out a thousand dollars and it's just like, ha, money everywhere. Woo. And it's like, it's a thousand dollars who can live off a thousand dollars a month anyways um it's not something that's going to be like man am i going to turn down this four thousand dollar a month job or you know this whatever 10k a month like computer science job or this four thousand dollar a month like eight thousand dollar a month plumbing job because i'm getting a thousand dollars a month no of course not of course not and obviously it would spur the economy further etc um I like how he says, like, entitlement from the government. Like, dude, who is the government funded by? <laughs> it's funded by the people of the nation. That's the whole purpose. You should be like, yeah, what is the government doing for me? I fund you. I pay for you. So, yeah, I better be getting shit back because I'm literally funding you. I'm funding the government. That's what people are doing. You are funding the government. So why would you not be like, it's just crazy to me. Um, I mean, yeah, you work at a business like, yeah, I work for you. What do you do for me? I'm doing work for you. The reason the government exists is because of you. The government can't exist because of you without you. It literally doesn't exist. That's so, so laughably stupid. Um, and he talks, you know, the other guy talks about the jobs paid program, you know, obviously, um, a federal jobs guarantee would be a great thing too. You would just have infrastructure being very, uh, very highly boosted. And so people would have guaranteed jobs from infrastructure jobs, building bridges, building roads, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so, you know, with all that information I just threw at you, I want to summarize this video by saying that I can't be the only one who has seen this Joe Rogan switch where he moves to Texas. He gets a Spotify hundred million dollar deal. And all of a sudden he is, um, you know, freaking i don't know uh milton friedman all of a sudden he went from being bernie sanders supporter he was supporting medicare for all you know government spending etc cetera, etc cetera, although he was a little bit of a flip-flopper even back then but i definitely have felt like in 2018 he had solidified himself as pretty progressive but now with all of this stuff going on um you know he's completely just turned completely right wing so I definitely see a trend here. You would have to be insane or be gaslighting me to say that psh, there's no trend. Dude, what are you talking about? Now, could now why did this trend happen? Why did Joe Rogan flip? And that's my question to you. Let me know down below in the comments. Why exactly did Joe Rogan do this flip? Why is Joe Rogan all of a sudden Milton Friedman in a mere four years um, after moving to Texas, a right wing state? Uh, with uh, does Texas even have income tax? I don't even know. I forget. Um, but does Texas, you know, uh, why did he make this turn? Did he make it because he got all the money and now he could be himself who he was? Was he lying in 2018 about his position? Is he lying now? I don't really know, but that's what I'm curious to see, uh, because he has just completely turned into a just ridiculous dirtbag that just says just the dumbest stuff like this without any ounce of research. Did he pull up an article or a study? from the University of Toronto or, you know, uh, you know, uh, University of Harvard or something like that? Or did he just say, Psh, I'm bro Jogan, dude. I saw the people not working with the unemployment benefits. It's just like, oh boy, you know, it's just not, uh, I mean, during, I mean, obviously during the time of the, of, of like the peak coronavirus, the whole point was to not work, right? That was the whole point. Um, uh, but labor shortage continued because employees looked at it and said, hmm, the benefits of this do not outweigh the negatives, and therefore, I will not be taking employment here because you need to raise your bitch-ass wages. So, uh, you know, that that's what's going on here. Let me know your thoughts down below.